All right, so it's currently the day after I uploaded the first episode of the Greninja Guide. And after the video being up for just 12 hours, there's been so much positive feedback on it that it's amazing. It seems that literally everyone learned something about Greninja in that video, which is awesome considering that this game has been out for almost a year and a half now. This just goes to show the amount of depth that Greninja has as a character. So in part one, we covered an entire five moves over the course of 30 minutes. Yeah, let's try to go for six in this part. Today, we're going to be going over Greninja's advantage state, which is when he's the strongest. So now that we know the timing from part one, let's short hop fast fall forward air right into the video. Oh god, that was bad. Starting off with Jab. Yes, I know I literally just said that we're going to focus on his advantage state, but I'm in a time crunch. I want to get at least six moves in this video. So Greninja's jab isn't necessarily a move you want to use in advantage state unless you're jab locking your opponent. But it's a really good get off me tool that you can use to put yourself in advantage state. If you jab your opponent at low to medium percents and land a gentleman, you can force a tech chase scenario. Remember how we talked about how fast Greninja is in part 1? He's actually so fast that he can potentially cover all of your opponent's tech options. If you want to read where your opponent's going to end up, you can go for a nair, dash attack, down tilt, or forward air. Or if you don't want to predict and just get damage, you can charge a shuriken and after your opponent techs, release it to hit them. Alright, so Gentleman gives us all of these opportunities to get more damage from tech chases. Why would you ever want to go for a multi-jab? I honestly ask myself this question all the time. So multi-jabs are a really big commitment, meaning that if you miss your opponent or if they fall out of it, you can eat a punish. But they do give you more damage than just a gentleman. If you multi-jab your opponent while they're really close to the ledge, you can manage to get more hits in than if they weren't. This is actually really useful for when better Greninja over here turns into a ghost type. If the enemy Joker has Arsene, you can go for multi-jabs while they're in the corner to drain their meter. Even if you eat a slight punish for it, it can be a lot better than dying to back air at 50. The one character you don't want to go for multi-jabs against is Bowser. His tough guy mechanic makes it so that he doesn't even flinch whenever you hit him with a rapid jabs. In part 1 we talked about how jab is a frame 3 option that can beat your opponents out of shield options. Greninja is a fast hauler which means that he can be really prone to getting comboed. A lot of characters like Fox or Toon Link really like spamming up tilts against Greninja because he'll fall right back into them. If you see the window of opportunity, you can just go for a jab in this position. Because it's a frame 3 option, you can potentially jab right out of the combo. This can be a better option than tossing up your shield because Greninja's out of shield options are some of the worst in the game. His most reliable out of shield option is jab, and that doesn't even come out until frame 14. Yeah, it really hurt just to say that. Alright, that's everything about jab done. Now can we get into advantage state? No, we still have F tilt to cover. Where would you be without F tilt? Like Jab, F-Tilt is a really good get off me tool in Greninja's kit. You can angle F-Tilt up or down, but if you're trying to use it in a get off me way, the regular F-Tilt gives you the most range. At higher percents, instead of committing for a laggy smash attack, you can actually kill with F-Tilt. In this situation, the up and downward angled F-Tilts have more knockback than the horizontal one. If you manage to connect an angled F-Tilt at early percents, you can force a tech chase from your opponent. Unlike after hitting your opponent with a gentleman, you have enough time to get a jab lock after an F-Tilt. Alright, please remember before I get into dash attack, I said this in part 1 already, but don't spam it in neutral, that's not what it's used for. So a recap of when to go for dash attack. If your opponent commits to a laggy option, that's when you do it. Use it as a punish tool and not as a crutch in neutral. If you force a tech chase on your opponent, dash attack is a really quick burst option that Greninja can use to punish them. If you connect dash attack, you get a bunch of combos. At early percents, you can do dash attack into up smash. At percents later than this, dash attack up smash won't connect anymore. So you can go for a dash attack up air or a dash attack rar back air. The timing for back air is a little bit tight, so you want to go into training mode and really grind out this combo. But if you do land it, you can connect another back air at early percents guarantee. If you manage to hit your opponent off stage with this, you can go for a shadow sneak to kill them if they choose the wrong option. You really put yourself in disadvantage if you miss though, so use it sparingly. At even later percents, you can do dash attack forward air guarantee. Remember that sometimes you have to instant double jump to get this forward air to connect. If dash attack forward air isn't a kill confirmed yet, you can read your opponent's option and still land a kill. 
Dash attack sends at an angle that's really convenient for tech chases on platforms. From here, you can cover their options with moves such as up smash or nair. Greninja actually has a really good kill confirm at around 70% against these characters. If you have enough space after landing a dash attack, you can go for a fast wall up air. Against characters not on this list, you'll have to go for a jab lock or a tech chase because they fall so fast that they can hit the ground. If you're fighting a character that is on this list, you can go for a down toe up smash that works as a kill confirm. I know, it's really unfortunate that we can't connect it against certain characters, but there is an even deadlier combo that works on a majority of the roster. After dash attack, we can do a fast all up air. If your opponent lands just past the lip of the stage, you can go for a down toe F smash that works as a kill confirm. Even if this doesn't kill your opponent, they'll be off stage in a position for you to edge guard them. If you have good enough timing, you can get a guaranteed dash attack against a landing opponent. This is because every character has a first enter landing lag. If your opponent tries landing with an aerial, you can stay out of its range and punish it right after. But if they land into shield, you don't want to dash attack them, right? Right? No, what are you doing? I told you not to dash attack on shield! Okay, despite dash attack not being safe on shield, you can get a cross up with it. A Greninja player from New York by the name of Professor MGW did a ton of research around this. So here's the rundown. You would expect to be able to cross up your opponent's shield if you input dash attack while running into it. Dash attack on shield cross up is extremely, extremely character dependent. Hey look at me, I'm touching Captain Falcon's shield and dash attacking. I can't cross him up, right? No, there's a bunch of characters like this. You have to actually time dash attack just right so that you can cross up their shield. Again, this is extremely character dependent. If you want to see MGW's research, check it out below. Alright, now we can get into the moves that Greninja wants to toss out in advantage. Starting with up tilt, this move is insanely, insanely disjointed for no reason. Don't believe me? Check out this clip. Yeah, Greninja can beat out landing sword aerials with his tongue. Can we talk about how little sense this makes, by the way? You would imagine that Greninja actually flinches whenever he gets his tongue chopped off by a sword. Hell, I'm pretty sure I've bitten my own tongue before and almost died. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is that this move is really disjointed and you can beat out a bunch of attacks. Against slow followers, Greninja has some crazy, crazy up tilt combos he can land. But these up tilt combos are really hard to get and depend more so on fast tilt up here than up tilt. So we're going to hold off on them. Alright, here's another use for up tilt. Have you ever started a nair combo and not had the space to finish it up with a dash attack? You can flip that combo from horizontal to vertical just by holding up and pressing A after the nair. From here you can go for an up smash or an up air. And hey, look at that, we started to juggle. Let's say you got a juggle going from up tilt and your opponent decided to land and shield. And because you're a good Greninja player, you're not going to dash attack their shield. So what do you do? You can go for a grab! Oh my god, Greninja has a grab? Yes, Greninja does have a grab, use it! It's not the fastest in the world coming out on frame 10, but it does have a ton of range. Alright, what can we get from grab? If you press up after grabbing your opponent, you'll input an up throw. This is probably our most used throw, and it can put our opponent right back up into juggle position. From early to mid percents, you can get an up throw up air guaranteed. And at high percents, we have a really solid kill mix up. If your opponent's scared of up air, there's a chance that they might go for a directional air dodge. If you see this, start charging Shadow Sneak in their direction and release it whenever you hit the ground. Most of the time this will connect because Greninja is such a fast follower that he'll hit the ground before the opponent. And because the period that you're stuck in directional air dodge is determined by the distance you fall and not the time, BOOM! That's a free stock! Up throw is also a kill throw! If for some reason your opponent's at 200% and isn't in Bowser, you can kill them easy. If you grab them and they're not quite at up throw kill percent, you can get a few pummels. Considering that your opponent probably isn't a Tazbot that can make 60 inputs a second, you can usually get two guaranteed pummels to get that extra percent for up throw to kill. Wait, what was that ancient Greninja tech from part one? Hold in! Yes, that does apply here. Proper DI for Greninja's up throw is in, not out. There are tons of players, even at the top level, that refuse to DI in for no reason. And remember, if you jump out, we will roof you. Alright, what percent does up throw kill at? To figure this out, you can write a python script that uses Ruben's smash calculator and the bisection method to determine the instant that the x path for KO is on the screen. Or you could just go to the description and see the chart I made. Alright, sweet, that's up there all done. Now what if I told you Greninja had a forward and a back throw? 
On the topic of kill throws, let's go to F throw. If your opponent's right at ledge, this will kill a little bit before up throw. And the animation for F throw is super fast, meaning that if you grab your opponent, you might not even want to pummel because they won't have time to react. Alright, what about back throw? Don't expect to be Ness with this back throw, it will not kill. I've literally played in sudden death against opponents at 300% and not gotten a kill off of back throw. So what is it used for? Well, if you grab your opponent and they're not quite at up throw kill percent, back throw is Greninja's most damaging throw. And you can potentially back throw your opponent for positioning if you want to go for an edge guard, which also works with forward throw, by the way. All right, down throw is super, super tricky. There's a lot of misconception in the Greninja community about the confirms that you can get off the down throw. But I'm going to tell you right now, the only confirm that you can guarantee get against every character from down throw is a jab. But why? I thought down throw dash attack was true. Two words for you. No tumble. A little while back, a Greninja player by the name of Kike asked me to do research on Greninja's down throw. He said that against certain characters, Greninja's down throw pops the opponent up without giving them a chance to jump out. This is where he first discovered no tumble. So against these characters and below these percents, you can get a down throw no tumble window. At 0%, we don't have enough frame advantage from down throw to connect a dash attack against any of the characters, so I recommend going for a jab. After that, it's all free. Alright, that's just down throw at early percents versus these characters. What else is there? At mid percents, if you want to combo your opponent horizontally and not vertically, you can go for a down throw, attack, cancel, back air. This works for a really long while against the entire cast. You can also pop your opponent off the ledge to go for an edge guard. At higher percents, we don't really have a confirm to go for off of down throw, but it does set up really nicely for kills. Because your opponent's expecting an F throw at these percents, they might try to DI in. If they do so, you can go for a forward air, or if they choose another option, you can just cover that one. All right, great, we got all of the throws out of the way. Now let's go back to grab. So remember how Melee Marth could grab you from another setup? Yeah, Greninja can do that too with his pivot grab. Look at that range. If your opponent is landing with an aerial, you can outrange it with a pivot grab. So much for attack beating grab, right? If your opponent's on ledge, you can potentially cover normal get up, get up attack, and roll all with a pivot grab. You have to get just the right spacing to do it though, so dashing back and pivot grabbing might not be the optimal play. If you enter this Konami code into your GameCube controller, you'll do something called an instant pivot grab. From here, Greninja will do a 360 and pivot grab on spot. This is pretty tricky to get the hang of, so really grind it out in training mode as well. Oh my god, pivot grab's amazing, what's dash grab like? Don't ever, for any reason, do anything to anyone, for any reason, ever, no matter what. I'm not even kidding you when I say dash grab is probably Greninja's worst move. No! This move has so much startup and so little range that I don't see any reason you would ever want to go for it. And this is coming from the guy that made Footsoul's viable in Ultimate again. So instead, you want to perform something called a dash cancel grab. So what you can do is dash towards your opponent and then release the analog stick or hold down on it, then input grab. From here, Greninja will magically come to a halt in a split second and do a standing grab. Always, 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 always go for this instead of dash grab. This is no joke my third time trying to record the audio for back air because my microphone decided to start hating me all of a sudden. So I hope you guys appreciate me for this. Anyways, in part one, I really glossed over this move and that's because there's so much to it that that 30 minute video would have probably no joke turned into a 45 minute one. So let's try to knock it out. While I talk about edge guarding with back air, I'm gonna be playing this one clip because it's pretty much a back air tutorial. So we know that back air is a great tool for edge guarding and we also know that Greninja has an amazing recovery. So if we combine the two, we can see that Greninja can go super deep compared to other characters and she's out of stock. So if you're fighting a character that doesn't have as good of a recovery as Greninja, you can basically go as deep as you want and get a back air guaranteed. Is the clip done yet? Well anyways, you get my point. Back air is also a great move to be tossing around in neutral. If your opponent likes approaching with aerials, you can just hit them right back with a back air. If you land a back air at early percents, you can force a tech chase from your opponent. From here, you can go for a jab lock or cover their options with a dash attack. Against floatier characters, you can true combo a dash attack from the back air. Speaking of tech chases, if you force your opponent to tech on a platform, you can get some crazy back air strings going. Yes, I know that clip was recorded on an iPhone, but it highlights my point so well. 
Back air also has a really long lingering hitbox, so if your opponent's at ledge, you can cover a ton of options with it. Alright, let's go back to edge guarding for a minute. So if you back air your opponent towards the stage, you can get a stage spike. Because the move has 3 hits instead of just 1, the timing to tech can be a little bit tricky. Remember how I talked about the move's lingering hitbox like 10 seconds ago? Well you can actually 2 frame really easily with back air. If your opponent has a teleport recovery, yeah, 2 framing is pretty hard. So instead what you can do is whenever they up B, run off the ledge and input a back air. The move stays out for so long that it will technically 2 frame your opponent and get a stage spike. But don't expect it to be unteckable anytime soon. For some reason even Puff can still tech back air at 200%. Alright, so this next part is going to be some ancient Appalachian Twitter tech. If you hit your opponent with a teleport recovery off the stage, go ahead and grab ledge. If they try up being back to the stage, fast wall from the ledge, jump into the stage, and go for a back air. This will technically two frame your opponent back off the stage. And because your opponent doesn't get their double jump back in this game, that's a stock. Alright, let's talk about Greninja's little feet. That did not come out right at all. So if you're going to stage spike your opponent, you can actually trade back air with their up B. This means that only the first two hitboxes will connect and they are semi-spike hitboxes. So if your opponent tries to tech the third hit of back air, they might just air dodge and end their own stock. These two tiny little hits of back air also give us crazy good frame advantage. So you can land combos like back air 1 down tilt up smash for a kill. At later percents, the back air 1 will send your opponent a little bit too high to connect the down tilt, so you can just go for an F smash from here. Back air 2 doesn't have as good frame advantage as back air 1, but it does send your opponents into the ground instead of up. So you can get back air 2 down tilt combos for longer than back air 1. If you want to check out your back air frame advantage, here you go! Check that out. Ever hear the saying thick thighs save lives? No? Me neither. So instead of saving lives, let's end some. If you connect with Greninja's thigh on the first or second hit of back air, you'll do set knockback. So if your opponent's at 0%, they'll take the same knockback as if they were at 900%. This doesn't come up very often at all, unless you're going for a cross up with back air. But against fast swallers, you can force a tech chase. We also have some really interesting combos that we can get off of the thigh hit of back air. If you ever get a thigh hit of back air when edge guarding your opponent, it seems really likely that you can true combo into another back air. The biggest use I personally have with thigh hit back air is for stage spiking. If you jump into your opponent's up B as you hit them with a the back air, you can stage spike them with a thigh hit box. And because they're waiting for the third hit of back air, they might not even hit that tech. This is honestly a mix up for even me the Greninja player because I don't know when I'll get it. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the move coming out frame 5. Wait, this move's frame 5? That's an out of shield option, right? No, we don't have out of shield options and it's awful, I know. If you input a rising back air, only the first two hits will connect and you can't get anything off of them. So only use this if a Ridley's pressuring your shield with a down taunt. Wait. Going on to Shadow Sneak. This move is really weird. Really, really weird. So whenever you charge up Shadow Sneak, you won't have any mobility at all really. But if you manage to hit a Shadow Sneak, holy crap this move does damage. I honestly don't know what was going on in the developer's mind whenever they decided to make Shadow Sneak such a strong move, because let me give you a rundown of some Pokemon stats real quick. So Greninja is a special attacker, which means that his special moves will do more damage than his physical moves. Shadow Sneak is a physical move and is a ghost type move at base 40 power. You know what's a special water move that gives Greninja the same type attack bonus of 50%? Hydro Pump. Why, 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 why does Hydro Pump do 700 times less knockback than Shadow Sneak? Also, Sakurai, if by the grace of god you're watching this video, Shadow Snake is a priority move, which means that this makes sense! Can we please bring it back, please? <laughs> Alright, someone complained that I didn't have enough Pokemon statistics in part 1, so hopefully that did it. Alright, so Shadow Sneak takes forever and a half to come out. But whenever you do hit it, that's a stock really early. So if you get a read against your opponent, that's when you want to Shadow Sneak. Don't do it in neutral, this is an awful tool to do. Someone sent me a replay once and was just Shadow Sneaking over and over and asking for feedback. Don't do that! Alright, how else can we use Shadow Sneak apart from getting a punish and cheesing out some stocks? I'm glad you asked. So sometimes Greninja doesn't have the recovery needed from just Hydro Pump to get back to the stage. What you can do is charge up a Shadow Sneak and then Hydro Pump afterwards to extend his recovery. You can abuse this to go super, super low compared to other players. If you're ever being edgeguarded, you can shadow sneak your opponent right off ledge. This is a mix up. 
mix up as a not standard. <laughs> Don't do it all the time, please. Okay, now let's go on to the most whack tech that you'll ever see in Ultimate. Shadow Snake parries. Oh boy. So Greninja is the only character that can do a non-up special out of shield without first having to drop his shield. The quickest frame that any other character in the game can parry on is frame 4. Greninja can completely cancel his shield animation with Shadow Snake and parry on frame 1. Yes, 1. We are number 1. That one. So if you hold down your shield button and input a Shadow Snake, you'll parry on frame 1. And because you're already holding your shield button, you can just mash B and parry infinitely. This tech is extremely niche to pull off, so I only have one use for it. If you neutral get up from the ledge and go right into shield, there's normally a one frame window that your opponent can hit you with an attack. But guess what? This is shield. We don't like that. So instead you can do a neutral get up into a shadow sneak parry and parry frame one. So if your opponent decides not to grab or be a god with his hitboxes, you can get a shadow sneak parry into down tilt from ledge. Remember how I said we lose all of our mobility whenever we Shadow Sneak? I lied. Whenever you use Shadow Sneak, you do have access to your jump, double jump, wall jump, and wall cling. This gives you access to tons of crazy mix-ups. One of these mix-ups is from a wall cling. If you start charging your Shadow Sneak and then cling onto the wall, you'll still keep your Shadow Sneak charged. From here, you can jump to stage height, release your Shadow Sneak, and go the distance that you charged. Another really interesting thing about Shadow Sneak is that whenever you use it on a flat stage, you'll only ever go to ledge if you charge it all the way. For some reason on stages with slants, you'll go right past the ledge off stage. And the final thing about Shadow Sneak is that you can do it out of a taunt. I'd say we have enough time to go over smash attacks. Alright, let's go in order from least complex to the most. So down smash is Greninja's fastest smash attack coming out on frame 11. It's pretty fast, but it's also pretty weak. If you land the first two hits of backer and don't have enough frame advantage for F smash to come out, you can go for a down smash. If you force a tech chase on your opponent in the corner or on a platform, down smash can cover every single one of their options. Down smash is also one of our best tools for two framing. But don't make this mistake. A lot of Greninja players try to go for down smash two frames while running up right next to the ledge and wonder why they missed it. And this is because down smash has an actually reasonable hitbox. So tell me, is your hand touching their hand here? If not, yeah, that's probably not a two frame. So you have to position down smash just right so that you can actually hit them on ledge. A good setup for this is hydro pumping diagonally into the stage. From here, you should have just the right space in the two frame. Another surprising two framing option is F smash. It really doesn't look like it at all, but this hitbox is massive. We've already talked about how deadly of a confirmed down tilt into F smash is, but we haven't talked about near into F smash. No, not that one. We're talking about sour spot near stutter step F smash. The timing for landing this is a little bit tricky, but if you get it, holy crap, this can kill early. If you go for a sour spot near F smash, the F smash will whiff. So we have to do something called a stutter step. If you're using tilt stick, which you should be with Greninja, you'll have to turn on AB smash for this. So the inputs are pretty simple, you just gotta get used to the timing. So after landing the sour spot near, you wanna initiate a dash, then press A and B at the same time. If you did it right, you should get a stutter step F smash and connect it true. This confirm has a really tight window that it works in, but if you get a kill at 50, hey, it's worth it. If you've ever gotten a down tilt up smash, you know how ridiculously good this move is. But like most of Grenisha's moves, it's also ridiculously weird. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. If your opponent's standing on a platform, the sub smash will only sweet spot on maybe two stages, Battlefield and PS2. On any other stage, only the sweet spot will connect and your opponent won't get launched. However, some characters do have privilege against our up smash. If you ever try up smashing a Link or Ganon at high percent on a Battlefield platform, they'll pop right out. And against Joker and Captain Falcon, if you have smashed them from behind, they'll pop out as well. If you ever up smash an airborne opponent above a platform, they do have a small window to tech out of the first hit. But for some reason, on stages that don't allow up smash a sweet spot, if your opponent's lying down or in the teching animation, you can get the sweet spot to connect. Yeah, don't ask me why. Despite what a lot of people might say on commentary, up smash cannot cover every option from a tech chase on a platform. 
So instead, you want to charge up smash and cover the direction you think your opponent's going to tech in. Alright, let me tell you some BS about up smash real quick. Sometimes Greninja thinks he's Miley Cyrus and can throw his hands up, play his song, let the butterflies fly away, and he'll trade with up smash. From here, only the first hitbox will connect and your opponent won't go anywhere but spiked into the ground. Always expect this to happen and go for a jab lock afterwards. Since your opponent probably isn't trying to tech off of the top blast zone, they're really likely to miss a tech here. And now instead of doing an up smash, we go for F smash, which actually works. So this is the mindset to always be in whenever you go for an up smash. But be careful if you're doing it on a stage of slants. He thinks Ken is the best at the moment. Oh my god, no fucking light light, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> <laughs> Have you actually labbed that before? Yes. Have I you labbed that? Hey, you made it to the end of the video! Yes, I know, we really focused on Greninja's advantage and didn't even touch up air. And that's because, drum roll, please... Part 3 is gonna be the long-awaited Jablock episode. So yes, everything from jab locking to dash locking to footstools is going to be covered in part 3. I also wanted to take this chance in the end of the video to say, Wow, you guys are amazing. I've gotten so much support from you all recently. Wow. <laughs> if you did so much, just leave a like or a comment on part 1 saying that you enjoyed it. Wow, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm honored to make this content for you guys. I've actually been really blowing up in the Smash scene lately. I have um, top Greninjas around the world following me. No, is, is that the Greninja lab monster himself? what's up, baby? I've got uh, Shiki, I've got Ice Studying, I've got Venia, <laughs> I've got JW, all on my Twitter following me because, oh my god. <laughs> and you guys have been so, so supportive of me on my way there. Just the other day, I was streaming and a viewer named Kiernan donated DLC to me. I'm <laughs> No, get him out of here! <laughs> this has been such an issue for such a long time. Uh, the clip using Arsene in the beginning, I had no way to record that. But you guys are so, so amazing, honestly. So I'm trying to do my best to make this content as quality as possible and I'm really experimenting. Um, I'm not just labbing Greninja right now, I'm labbing a ton of real life stuff. So if I do something like this, you'll see that the quality of the audio for this video drops way down. Uh, this is my recording studio by the way, I'm not a millionaire, all I have is a comforter and a microphone. Let me see, here's my microphone that really hates me for some reason. Every time you like move this board around, it'll turn off. Oh, that was a bad idea. Okay, I guess I'm using the iPad's audio now. But, um, Thank you all for watching. This is a face-to-face -face moment where I say, I really appreciate all of your continued support. Just reading your comments really makes my day. But yeah, thank you all for watching the video and I hope to see you all in part three. Take care.